Don't Be a Puppet, Pull Back the Curtain on Violent Extremism is a video game-like website that the FBI set up in February to help teenagers be aware of terrorist recruiters, I think. Players complete quizzes, play minigames, tick checklists, and skim through reading material to free up this tangled puppet, eventually earning a real-life FBI certified certificate of completion. And it's a mess of abstract metaphors and contradictory messages. It's somehow both the most explicit example of a propaganda game in recent memory, and yet also a scathing antithesis of what a genuinely scary and effective propaganda game could look like. Also, one of the mini-games turns you into an ugly goat-sheep hybrid, dodging blocks. This mini-game is called Slippery Slope, and it's meant to convey the dangerous escalation of placing more and more blame on political enemies, I think. You are presumably following the distorted logic of blame by running through this field. If you dodge obstacles and pass a level, you're rewarded with distorted logic that you're supposed to avoid. But if you hit a block, your goat just explodes! It looks like I'm really bad at this, but you gotta know that the controls are hypersensitive because they're tied to my monitor's refresh rate. Once I lowered that down, suddenly it was like playing on easier than easy mode. Which led to a lot less explosions, but since this is all a metaphor, it begs the question, what do the explosions represent? Is it the goat blowing himself up as a fully radicalized suicide bomber? Or is the goat suddenly taking a more righteous path, leading away from self-destruction? What did the blocks represent? Are they extremist recruiters speeding up the process? Or are they friends, family, and community pillars trying to talk our extremist terrorist goat back down to reason? Shouldn't I be avoiding the distorted logic like it says, instead of running towards it? Whether you're looking too deep into it or not, the metaphor they're going for makes no sense. What it does represent, though, is the flawed rhetoric of this whole experience. The distorted logic the game warns you against could almost verbatim be a list of post-9-11 presidential speech notes. Our way of life, our very freedom came under attack. Either you're with us, either you love freedom, and with nations which embrace freedom, or you're with the enemy. We have no ambition in Iraq except to remove a threat and restore control of that country to its own people. And so on and so forth. Before launching this game-esque microsite, the FBI consulted several religious and civil rights leaders to preview it, who all came to a similar conclusion. It was that this game's thing's focus was almost entirely aimed at Islamic extremism. As schoolwork, it would be counterproductive to the cause by triggering more bullying towards Islamic students. And it's also unrealistic in its depiction of extremist threats in the first place. The game's depicted process of radicalization doesn't match up with real-life data. And more importantly, the most dangerous attacks on America since 9-11 have been by people who don't have anything to do with Islam. So the FBI rallied together a few examples of token domestic extremist ideologies, conveniently organized to the left and right of each other. While the international section is full of very specific information, the domestic section is far less eager to name, blame, and even cite specific events. When it came time for an American bureau to risk defaming its own citizens as terrorists, they put the kitty gloves back on. Gloves that are layered on thicker when it comes time to learn about identifying propaganda. It's ironic. Players just have to look at fake posters of non-existent Soviet font slogans, which are a harsh contrast with the racist caricatures, altered war photography, and cherry-picked bits of statistics and history that any edgy teenager is likely to find on the internet as actual real-life political propaganda. It shows an FBI that's bafflingly out of touch with how the internet works. How do terrorist recruiters make contact? Through Reddit! and Facebook, and even the App Store. Of course! This guy's thread was started by an extremist! This game was made by an extremist! I know we haven't met, but you should come join our fight overseas. According to a public affairs director who previewed this game earlier, this same quiz answer used to belong to a guy with an Arabic name talking about going on a mission. Now he's just Sean, and the mission is specifically a fight overseas. After previous sections that have the player flipping through actual news clippings and interviews, this part conjures up a technophobic panic that is pure fantasy. When the game goes on to suggest that extremism may be born out of social alienation, anxiety, and frustration, they're suggesting that terrorism is born out of typical teenage angst. 
Through this section, and the App Store scare from earlier, they're suggesting something that, however well-meaning this game could have been, is downright sinister, and that is the very same paranoia and distrustfulness that the game warns us against earlier. And either an earnest or an ironic reading of this game wastes its effort. It may be a well-intended effort, but it's one that wastes the real-life interviews with actual victims of terrorism. Interviews that were legitimately hard to watch. It's easy to laugh at cheesy edutainment like this at its expense, until you're reminded that this whole endeavor is based on real-life violence at real people's expense. And it's such a shame that, through some bizarre process of translation, that pain and suffering turned into this. Don't Be a Puppet may be a hilariously abstract contradiction of its own claims, but it's also based on real-life terror. And it's also a video game. It's a collection of mini-games and quizzes that undermine real-world political ideals. Just like the dime-a-dozen flash game Punch the Trump games. It's the latest in a history of edutainment and serious games whose lines between each other have blurred as the purposes of interactive political propaganda have devolved into self-parody. And perhaps this is its natural conclusion. Video games are constructed worlds in which different rules apply. So what's stopping any political entity from simulating the dystopia or utopia envisioned by their ideology? Here we have explicit, labeled, government propaganda, authored by none other than The Man, appropriating the rules of gaming to have its audience empathize with rules imagined by the FBI. Whether or not the world this game creates is the borderline racist, anti-Islamic one previewed by teachers last year, or the absurd mess it ended up being turned into, is the result of consultation, research, and editing. Its effectiveness is also the result of these campaigns having a kind of fundamental understanding of the potential of games themselves. And so far, most campaigns have totally fumbled that, just copy-pasting their message on top of cheap, flash-made clones of games that have nothing to do with their message just like this one. But years in the future, as more generations that grew up with games begin running for offices of their own, we may see that shift. Commercial games already include variables like the effect a tax cut has on the quality of a neighborhood's infrastructure, or determining who the bad guy of an ethically binary shooter looks like as examples of politically influenced design choices. And as gaming continues to mature along with its audience that's becoming more politically aware, questioning the implications of a game's rules, and perhaps skewing them towards a particular outlook, is a practice that more people are going to be participating in in the future. So what are the propaganda games of the future going to look like? Either way, whether or not they even work or ever did, it seems like games like this have already become a relic. But the ideas and purposes behind it, of gaming for politicking, that's what you're really gonna have to be looking out for in the future.